Hello, so this tutorial is about the uh, solar loading model in Ansys Fluent. Uh, so I'm going to use the same geometry I've used for the surface to surface model, radiation model, and the discretized radiation model. It's a cube of half meter length. Uh, I just use this edge sizing and the face meshing for the structured mesh. And this one is uh, the low X wall, high X wall, high Y, low y, high Z, low Z in this side, and low Y is at the bottom. Okay, so that's the geometry. <clears throat> what you're going to do is we're going to implement a solar loading model and also apply radiation model with the solar loading model and see uh, how the model uh, works okay uh, what are the parameters we need to uh, be concerned about when while doing it so in the fluent uh, let's check if there's negative volume no gravity you can enable it disable it uh, I think it plays a bigger role in here but uh, it became a habit so anyways uh, go to the model uh, enable the energy equation and uh, this would be a laminar flow because there is no wind flow coming in uh, let's try to keep it simple in the radiation model let's start with uh, a solar loading model without any radiation model okay so we'll see what we what this solar ray tracing model is so what this one does is uh, it has a solar calculator or you can not use the solar calculator and apply a direct solar ir irradiation now what is this solar irradiation or what is the where is this value coming from uh, i'll play a short video uh, which explains uh, where does that come from just in case if anyone is curious so i found a good video on youtube that explains it nicely so i'll just play it it'll be like very here short. is the sun and here is the earth the sun emits energy at a huge rate, almost 4 times 10 to the 26 joules every second. This energy takes the form of electromagnetic radiation, specifically, it's mostly visible light. The energy spreads out in all directions like a sphere, and by the time it reaches the Earth, it has been spread over a giant area. But why is it 10 to the 26 and not 10 to the 27? What dictates the energy? The answer is the Stefan Boltzmann law. In this formula, what area do we use? Is it the area of the sun or the area of the solar energy sphere? The answer is it's the area of the sun because the sun is the object emitting this power, so we use its surface area. So the emissivity will use one because we'll assume it's a black body. We put in the Stefan Boltzmann constant and the area of the sun is just the area of a sphere, 4 pi times the sun's radius squared. T here is the surface temperature of the sun. When we calculate, we get a value of exactly what we wrote before. When this energy, this power, reaches the Earth, it is much less intense because it has spread out to a giant area. So the intensity has dropped, and we could calculate it. We take the power, and we divide by the new area that the energy is spread across. Because this energy sphere is exactly that, a sphere, the area is 4 pi times the radius squared. And we're using here the radius of the giant energy sphere. This value, the solar intensity that reaches our planet, is so uh, this is how you, uh, we calculate the uh, intensity uh, at the atmosphere, solar intensity at the atmosphere. It can vary a little bit based on uh, different conditions, uh, but on an average, it's around 1300, 1400 uh, range. Okay, so let's go back to Fluent. So like, for example, by default, Fluent has these uh, irradiation values. Okay. Uh, so either we can apply this one directly if we know what uh, like how much uh, solar irradiation we want to have as our boundary condition 
or uh, and uh, specify the sun direction vector uh, so check out the oh, I'll start over so what I did was uh, uh, there's some slight problem. I just had to restart the fluent. Uh, it wasn't sh uh, displaying the counter plot as it should have. So, so this is what I did. The boundary condition, the low x. Uh, this is the low x. Uh, it is uh, it is uh, a velocity inlet boundary type. Uh, specified as a velocity inlet boundary type and the radiation uh, of the total solar uh, radiation is being transmitted inside and if we go back to the model solar loading so this is the solar ray tracing the solar calculator I have applied 3 p.m. condition and east is x is 1 y is 0, z should be the north or I should say negative z should be the north. Click apply. Uh, always click apply. If you don't click apply this one doesn't update and then it would not update it. Okay. So click apply in here and then I'm using the uh, direct solar irradiation from calculate from the solar calculator. Click OK and then initialize and then you can take a look at the counter plot which is actually a little bit different from that one so this is it okay the sun is rising from the x positive direction east and it's 3 p.m in the afternoon that's why you can see the direct solar beam uh, incident uh, uh, falling down on the low low y surface okay and uh, this is the heat flux wall flux and to compute the temperature so let's see i didn't change any other wall condition uh, so for now uh, so let's see uh, and run the calculation see what happens so let's run about 100 iteration or maybe 300 iteration and let's come back after it's done so I stopped the iteration after one to iteration. As you can see, the energy equation is not uh, converging, but the other uh, equation is converged, way being converged. So it is a stable uh, solution. So let's take a look at the counter plot. And so after the steady state has been achieved, uh, this is the heat flux, nothing changed in here we want to see the temperature so this is the wall temperature at the walls and as you can see the maximum value is 5000 which doesn't make sense if we uh, put this box outside it should not reach that high temperature so what did we do wrong okay so don't worry we've set up it properly and fluent is working properly uh, the the issue here is like uh, why why do we have such a high temperature uh, the reason behind it is um, uh, the way we set up the wall okay so we specified only the uh, solar ray tracing and solar ray tracing model like the solar loading models doesn't uh, do any radiative heat transfer it's purely surface solar radiation falling on a surface okay and due to that solar intensity heating on that surface you can achieve some high temperature on that specific area of the wall but it doesn't do radiative heat transfer from that wall to the other surfaces or do any reflections uh, in order to achieve those things you need to couple it with other radiation models such as discrete ordinate or the surface to surface models okay but before going there, let's see if we can uh, get a reasonable temperature. Like, what did you do wrong? So if we go to the boundary condition, and let's take a look at the other walls, because that one is inlet, so nothing to change there. Um, radiation tab, absorptivity is too high. Uh, so this can be one reason. The thermal condition, heat flux, 
it's a heat flux thermal condition and heat flux is zero so there is no it is not an uh, it is not a heat source so what's actually happened here uh, why do we have such a high temperature is not only because of the absorption absorptivity high absorptivity but what is happening is um, uh, due to the incident radiation uh, incident heat fl solar flux uh, the the wall surface keeps uh, this bottom bottom wall surface and this uh, the side portion is being uh, uh being heated continuously and heat is being absorbed continuously because we didn't put any threshold or anything like that it's it keeps absorbing the heat and due to that high temperature surface uh convic convective heat transfer is happening and that's what's uh, actually causing the all the temperature uh all the, the the high temperature in all the surrounding walls okay so this is what's actually happening. Let's see if we can uh, reduce it uh, by a little bit. So I can, we can do, even if we don't change the absorptivity, let me show you. Uh, even if we don't change the absorptivity, uh, and use a mixed wall condition, mixed thermal boundary condition, and say our free stream temperature, the air temperature would not keep rising, okay? So a temperature, let's say this one is this temperature, and if it gets a very high temperature, it would go out from the domain. Uh, external radiation temperature is one. External emissivity, fine. Uh, click apply. And let's copy this boundary condition to the other walls. Okay. And uh, let's again initialize and run. Okay, this one is converged pretty fast. And this is my static temperature. Let's actually go over there first. Okay. So, temperature on the wall. And as you can see, the temperature is very reasonable. Uh, the temperature rise has been 370, so 70 degree. Uh, Celsius has has risen, has seven degree Kelvin has risen, and uh, as you can see, this is the high temperature zone because of the heat flux, solar irradiation directly hitting on these walls, and from this wall, again, no radiative heat transfer is happening in this simulation yet. Purely convective heat transfer is happening from this hot surface towards the surrounding surface. So this is what's actually happening right now. Okay and let's add uh, but what about if we want to create something highly reflective for example if you want to design a parabolic flow or uh, flat meters which reflects uh, sunlight like we have a coating which has a very high reflectivity uh, and we want to analyze that kind of problem what do we do so you can apply direct uh, like a do radiation model coupling with this solar loading model. I have gone through these parameters in the DO model tutorials I created, so you can go over there if, you, if you're interested. And uh, uh, by the way, I missed this one, the sun direction vector. Either you use the solar calculator, okay, based on the day, year, time, and the hour of the day, and the latitude and longitude, but if you don't know, and also the sunshine factor, if it's a cloudy, just reduce this factor. And if you are not comfortable with the solar calculator and you know the solar intensity you want to apply and at which angle, uh, so you can always use, just disable this value and then apply the direction vectors uh, in here, okay, manually. So based on that slope, of the x y and z value based on that based on the slope the solar uh, solar beam will hit the uh, hit the model okay so for example if i put zero in z let's take a look look at that first let's turn it off first and take a look at this one first so let's say z is zero uh, 
y is uh, y is one, let's say x is one as well. Or we can put y minus one, and based on the x and y value, it would create a slope. So based on that slope, uh, we can apply this constant solar irradiation with diffuse solar irradiation hitting uh, on the surface. Now, what is this diffuse solar irradiation? You can think of it is as uh, sunlight directly hitting on the surface uh, 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 with this irradiation value, and diffuse is some of the sunlight um, uh, due to passing through the air or maybe dust particle in the air or some other medium. Uh, some of the direct solar beam uh, scatters or deflects or refracted. So those refracted solar radiation also hitting on this inlet, uh, velocity inlet and falling on the surfaces. So those are coming from the surrounding, the, the scattered uh, solar radiation. Those are the diffused solar radiation uh, fa falling on with the direct solar radiation. Direct solar radiation is falling at a straight line, but diffuse is coming from a different angle, okay? It would be a very small amount. So click OK, initialize. And let's take a look at the Wally flux. Okay, so I'm not using the solar calculator. I'm putting manual values. And let's take a look. Okay, I messed something up, I think. Okay. So check with the, just play around with the values and uh, find a reasonable, uh, a reasonable values for this one. Okay, I'll skip for the, skip this one for now because I haven't uh, calculated the slope. So I think I missed something in here. So most probably because of that, I think the value didn't change. So anyways, I'll apply this one again. I will use the solar calculator values, click OK. And by the way, I want to apply the discrete ordinate radiation model as well. I uh, saying some of the properties has been added. Again, uh, similar to the DO model, it has added the scattering coefficient, absorption coefficient, and the refractive index. Um, and I have explained those things in the DO model, so I'll not go through that again. Now, if we go to the boundary condition, let's take a look at the wall. Uh, in the radiation tab, so we ha have OPEC, this is our OPEC wall, and internal emissivity is one, diffuse fraction is one. So if we want a purely reflective surface, what you can do is Let's say nothing would be diffused, okay, nothing would be scattered, and uh, nothing would be emitted as well. So, emissivity is zero, absorptivity is zero, absorptivity is zero. So, everything would be reflected, okay. This way, if you set up it this way, it means everything would be reflected, okay. And uh, click apply, also, if still has some temperature and absorptivity in here so click apply uh, so what i can do is i can apply this reflective condition for the bottom y and uh, the high x wall so what i will do is i'll copy this one to copy the, this one to low y only the others are the same Let's initialize. So let's take a look at the counter plot. So this was the solar it flux. What happened to the bottom wall? Okay, bottom wall is not um, like it's purely reflecting. So nothing is being absorbed or anything like that. So let's take a look at the temperature. Okay, and as you can see, these two surfaces are not absorbing but reflecting it so 
uh, it's different than the other wall temperatures and uh, there is both radiative and convective natural convection is happening radiation is happening and solar solar loading model is working as well so it's a combination of all of them and the temperature range is quite reasonable and uh, temperature went down because these two walls are not absorbing uh, not absorbing the solar uh, solar beam so uh, solar radiation is not being absorbed in these two walls so the total temperature went down and uh, it's 320 Kelvin, 321 Kelvin now. So this way you can couple uh, the radiation model with the solar ray tracing. You can even uh, model laser beam is heating on the surface and like how the temperature is distributing or some other fancy simulation you need to do. But this is how what you can do to combine the uh, the solar loading model and with the discrete model. Okay, I hope this helps. Thank you.